Slow it down. Good dog. Okay, we'll be starting the show in just a couple minutes. I'm the Grow Boss, and this show is all about growing cannabis. Why? Because duh, I work at a hydro store every day, and it's the weekend, and I'm still working here. So you might as well call on the show if you're growing cannabis. Um, we'll talk about, of course, how my stores are looking so good, and we'll take caller questions. The number's 84 Grow Boss. Of course, if you like the channel, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get updates. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about Cannabis Information Network and how that's going. I've, uh, I've got my Skype open, so if you want to call and bust my balls, you can call in. Uh, next week, I've got Jackie420 coming in. Dude, I wish I had as much personality as this guy. He is super funny. I'm going to get high with him. We're going to play Way That Sack, and uh, we'll see who does it better. And, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> super weed man <clears throat> send me a link to whatever it is you want happy birthday super weed man first second send me a link to whatever it is you want me to run for your birthday and i will so this is my store it's been coming along nicely um jackie 420 dude that dude is so fucking funny i wish i had as much personality as that guy um let's see so it's not oh, i guess it's time to actually start the show Mr. Sparks a lot. Shout out, Jackie. Um, we'll go over some Jackie videos later in the show. Let's see if I can do this. The dude is, the dude is funny. Um, except, uh, okay, so let me find, I'll get his, I got, uh, I got his channel right here. We'll, uh, we'll get into, we'll get into uh, Jackie a little more later. But, of course, if you have questions, I am the grow boss. I run this hydroponic store and, uh, oh dude, the Jackie, the, he's just, this dude's just too funny. Dude, this is. What's up my ninja? This your boy Jack, right? <laughs> Representing Lux I wish I could wear my hat like that. I can't do that anymore, but I wish I could wear my hat like Jackie 420. That dude is super funny. And we're going to go over some nug smashing with him. And I'm going to get high with his e-nail again. You know, I'm going to get high with it from that e-nail. I'm going to try that again. You guys watched me freak out last time. But 420 Jackie's, Jackie 420 is coming up with, uh, with some uh, CBDs. So I'm going to get high as fuck on like last time and see if I can have an anxiety attack. And then I'm going to smoke CBDs and see if I can bring it back down. Oh, 502. I lost your call if you want to call me back. Um, so that's Jackie 420. That's just some of the stuff I got going on. Let me make sure everything's working. Dogs eat evidence. <clears throat> P jammer. I'll tell you what my crazy girlfriend told me. She said, if you're going to bury a body, 
just put a dead dog on top of the body. So when they find the dog, they think that's it. But she said, you got to go deep. That's what everyone else's problem always is. You got to dig a hole deep enough. How much, Louis Curl, how much yield, how much could I yield? Oh, dude, where did it go? How much could? The store is looking good. Thank you. Um, How much could I, what was this thing? How much could I yield with two Mars 300s? I, I don't know. Not much, dude. Three, two, one. Good morning. You're on at the Grow Boss. Grow Boss, hey. Hey. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Unfortunately, I can't see the video right now, so I can only listen to you. I sent you the email about um, <laughs> the pest control protocol. Oh, pest control po protocol. Yes. <clears throat> so you wanted me to talk about pest control. Okay, I got that. Um, what I'll do for you is I'll tell you the, the entire process regardless of the bug or whatever it is you're trying to find. Is that okay? Yes. Real, okay. real quick, if you don't mind, um, just so all the listeners know, too, um, we did a consult, you and I, uh, at one of the hour consults, and I have your packages and everything. And uh, I was one of those callers. I knew I was going to call, and you were going to go, oh, no. You're the one that this will work for. Uh, you just need to turn this. And I'd watched all of your videos up until that point, still watch them all. And uh, I was just as dumb as the first one I watched until I talked to you. But, uh, <laughs> I told you that I was like, and you told me, I showed you the plants, and you said, uh, dude, your plants are dead already. And I said, nah, <coughs> nah. Well, they're fucking dead already, if you were right. <laughs> they died two weeks later. I, so, Girl I appreciate Boss is right. Listen to him. Sorry, go on. Girl Boss is right. Listen to him. Thank you so much for the call. I'll get into the uh, pest control in a minute. But let's just review what that last caller said. The Girl Boss is right. What? What? Girl Boss is right. Listen, I don't even teach you guys how to grow. I just teach you how to avoid failure. I don't care which products you use. I don't care. Hey, three, two, one. Give me one sec, okay? Yes, sir. I don't care what products you use. I don't care what you think is going on when it comes to growing cannabis. There is so much shit on the net and everything pretty much has nothing to do with what goes on when you grow cannabis. Why? Because like I said, I work at a hydro store. I see the problems every day. I literally know every problem you're gonna have. That's why I put these no more grow more cards together. This isn't facts about cannabis. I have a set of cannabis cards that talks about the different strains of cannabis. That's not what this is. These are questions and answers. For instance, what are the signs and symptoms? What are the signs and symptoms of root aphids? And here is the answer to those question to that question. What is, what is using CO2? How much? And here's some answers about CO2. Look, all I'm saying is you don't need to know how to grow cannabis. You probably couldn't even pass the driver's test from the DMV if you took it. I couldn't. I have no idea. And yet I can drive. I'm just saying that when it comes to growing cannabis, all you have to do is nothing. Leave the cannabis the fuck alone. That's the best starting point. Otherwise, for the most part, people just kill it. All right. Three, two, one. What can I do for you, sir? Um, I dropped and I called you back. Oh, oh, yes, the, sir. Uh, pest protocol. Oh, okay. No, you didn't drop. I said thank you and hung up on you. I'm sorry. Well, hang up on me again and I'll listen. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> have a good morning. Watch the show. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like the channel and subscribe. Next week, we got uh, Jackie420 coming on. Uh, Mike Shavaria. Listen, here's, I'm going to, your question is, what kind of soil would you recommend and what kind of nutrients would you use? So, let's take a look. Let's go over to the Grow Boss Wander Cam. And I would just like to point out to you, look look at all these nutrients that I sell. 
Look at all that shit. What, what, do you think one of these is better than any other? For instance, Advanced Nutrients has more shelves because they have more product. It's super confusing. And for some reason, they think that switching from a uh, 400 to a 300 and then going back to a 400 or doing a 126 is better than a 124 or it's any somehow any different or a 134 or a 200. You know what I mean? Like all of these things, it's all the same. I mean, they just have the most shelf space because they have the most product and they do the best advertising. But look at GH and there's Botanicare and there's Fox Farm. And, and really that, that's not it because you asked about the soil too, right? Okay, so let's do soil. Well, that's cocoa, right? That's uh, Ready Grow and that's the number one selling bag in my store. And that's the number two selling bag, Happy Frog. Now, both of them are owned by the same company. I mean, they're both put out by, uh, they're both put out by Fox Farm and Happy Frog. And here's the organic version. This is actually the cleanest, but look at all this, uh, look at all this cocoa and soil. Here's some brick shit. There's some guano. There's so much soil and so many nutrients. And that's because it's all the same shit. Does it really matter if you buy a PK from GH? Or you buy a PK like Hydroplex from Botanicare. Or you buy a PK, a big and sticky PK boost. Or you buy a Supernatural PK or a Big Up PK or a Bud Blaster or, a, or Fox Farm or Cool Bloom. Listen, all cars are the same. How come drivers are so bad? Well, it's because it's based on the talent of the grower. So what I'd always want to point out to you um, is, that, uh, is that it is all the same shit. And if you come into this project asking questions like, what's the best? Dude, I have people ask me, what's the best light all the time? And I'm like, oh, the most electricity for the money. Buy yourself a double end. And they go, well, my ceiling's five feet. I go, what the fuck did you buy a double end light for then? They go, you said it was the best. I go, well, it's the best in my circumstance with a 14 foot ceiling and a 30 by 100 room where I can put 40 or 50 of them in. Oh, so your circumstance was different than my circumstance. Since all but is the same, and light is light. Really what we're talking about is the reality of your situation. Oh, do I have a call? Do I have a call on right now? No, okay. The reality of your situation. Listen, this is all interpretation. Put your foot on the gas, all cars go forward. Electric, fuel, gas, diesel. It's all the same shit. So I like that I can see problems 10 times faster in H2O Denali. That is very funny. It's funny on so many levels because it's such a sophisticated, oh dude, that liquid cool bloom bag lasts forever. You wanna know why terrorists blow up buildings with powder instead of liquid? It's because powders are a hundred times stronger than liquids. I mean, think about like a glass of water and a container of salt. This water's got no salt in it and you continue to pour salt in. It dissolves and eventually it stops dissolving and then you stir it up and a little more dissolves and you heat up the water and a little more dissolves but eventually you pour so much salt in that all the water comes out i mean think about that there is you know what i mean you can remove you can literally remove all the water from a container by filling it up with salt of course salt is so much more powerful that cool bloom shit lasts forever Yeah, right out of the back. See, okay, so John Doe, now we're talking about a perspective because you like ocean forest right out of the bag. Hell yeah, but think about it. If you put a seedling in a red cup, like a 16-ounce solo cup, it's got enough nutrients in that for four weeks. And then just when you're tempted to feed, you put it in a one gallon. And if 16 ounces is enough for four weeks, if you add another 112 ounces to it, what, that's like seven times the amount. It should be good for another couple weeks at least, right? Wow. A, so Mr. Greenhead says, get a few yards of soil from your local farm and amend it. Make compost tea and top dress. Dude, a few yards? 
Mr. Greenhead, what are are you a farmer? Are you growing outdoors in a farm? A few yards, a yard of soil. You know what I mean? That's so much media. It's inappropriate for like the indoor grow. Um, okay, so the number is 84 Grow Boss. If you want to call in, buy the grow book. Um, Queen Bee, slow down. That's right, because there is nothing you can do. There's no product in my store. There is nothing you can do that's going to speed up the harvest or t or transport you off this rock. There's there there's nothing you can do. I mean, all you can do is allow the plant to fully express itself. So soon as you come into this project, talking about oh how you're going to kill it or how you're going to do more or how you're home on disability and have all the time in the world so there's no way you're going to let it fail blam 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 all ways to kill your plants i will tell you the best growers are the worst people to the best growers are always the one that don't give a shit they just don't care at all 916 good morning what can i do for you Hi, Grow Boss. Um, I watch your stream all the time, and I and I hear you talk about, um, uh, you know, what lights people want to use. And I've been looking at the CMH lights. Um, I, I'm getting two four by eight tents, um, and I just want to get the most watts for the. If you get what I'm saying, like how people use LEDs, I want to get the most watts or the most light for my watts, so I can keep my cost down. So, what do you recommend for like two four by eight tents? Well, I absolutely recommend that the first thing that you do is shift your position because getting the most watts for the light absolutely does not keep the cost down because the more watts you get, the more heat you're going to make, the greater the AC expense. So the question isn't one of, isn't one of cost per light. The question is one of in a systematic way. For instance, do you want to buy, I sell CMHs in my store. I think they're like 500 bucks or the LECs, you know, whatever those are, they're expensive, right? Are you going to buy a light rail? Are you going to buy a light rail light mover? Or are you going to buy two for the tent? And you have a four by eight. A five by 10 is literally 50% more. Four by eight is 32 square feet. Five by 10 is 50 square feet. That's 18 square feet more. 16 is half of 32. So it's like 55% more. So the question is, is that like, are you hard? <laughs> are you dead set on the four by eight, two, four? You said one, four by eight or two? Uh, two, four by eight. Okay. Well, I Would... guess let me back up to give you more perspective. First. Um, basically, I started um, in a bigger room and I've used two thowies before and it was just a lot of uh, on my electricity bill. Um, so... I was thinking, you know, I've seen people use 630s and claim they perform um, similar to uh, double-ended 1,000 watts. So that's all I was saying about um, saving a little bit on the water. Okay, so anybody, <laughs> no disrespect, but let me tell you, anybody who says that okay. they're, anybody who says, who complains about the watts that they're using or their electrical bill is not doing this right. So let's take a huge step back. And you said you had 2,000 watts. Sir, what was your yield? Um, I yielded a little over a pound. A pound so I was per not, light? A pound per light or a pound total? Yes. Uh, a pound, it was like a pound and a half for both lights. So I was not, I was on my lower yield side when I ran them. Since then, I've gotten better. Okay, so, so you didn't you just have a lot. low end on the yield. You had half of what you were supposed to get. And I would just like to make the observation that if you got three pounds instead of two, and if you approached four pounds because you were using CO2, I'm just suggesting that you would have had a good time. And your complaint would not have been about decreasing watts. Your complaint would have been, I can only fit 2,000 watts in the room. <laughs> see what i'm saying I get what you're yeah. trying to efficiently okay you're trying to efficient size the space so what i would suggest is one I, I don't know why you would have two tents the same size as veg as one half flower so in this particular case 
you would do a 600 you already have the equipment so you would take your 2000 watts you would put 600 watts on a light mover and veg and you would put a thousand watts on a light mover and flower both of them could be in the four by eight tent frankly you're going to hate the light mover and veg you're probably going to get a super sized hood with a 600 watt light do like six of the eight feet with 600 watts and then move them into flower at 600 watts on a mover with a small hood and then in a couple of weeks you'll turn it up to a thousand because a thousand in a four by eight space with a light mover is 1200 watts two 600s is 1200 watts so if you do one six in veg and two sixes in flower or a thousand on a light mover and flower either way both 1200 watts but i just want to point out that a four by four space is 600 watts max hey 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 wait sorry hang on one sec hey tss, tss, no crying eat your treat get your treat get your toy come on i know you're a good dog so my observation here is once you've defined the space you've limited the light could you put a cmh in there could you put an lec could you put an led could you put a t5 hell yes to all of those things but none of them are going to fix the inherent problem and that's one of the things that i learned about doing emergency medical was uh always determine and treat the true nature of the emergency or you can't solve the problem and so for you sir i would like to suggest that this is not one of wants this is one of grower talent you missed by half yeah so i would like to suggest well, that before you start spending more money perhaps learn how to use the equipment that you have what do you think about that? Well, well, the problem that happened was um, I, when I pulled that, um, I had, I didn't have enough AC for the room. So my temperatures were getting around some days. It was in the middle of the summer, so it was getting uh, above 90, and I didn't have CO2. So it was... It was a mess. Listen, I don't care. 770, I'll call back in a sec. Listen, I don't care about 90 degrees because, frankly, it's 108 today, and it's been above 105 for the last 60 days. And I got palm trees outside my store. Outside that door, there are palm trees. Palm trees in Las Vegas. They don't belong in Las Vegas. They've got palm trees in Las Vegas watered by tap water, and it's 108 degrees outside, minimally, and it's 30 in the winter out here. So listen, don't care about temps, because frankly, your room could be 108 if your light was 10 feet away, 12 feet away. What I'm suggesting is you neither dimmed your light nor had the appropriate amount of cooling for it. And if you did have cooling, you would have to add CO2 because you would have a sealed garden. Listen, there are so many things, and, and I, I, I'm trying to be a new friendlier grow boss, but I, really, I am happy to assign credit where credit is due, and congratulations on finishing. But frankly, you did so many things wrong that this is exactly why I tell you, why, why would you buy new equipment? Listen, if you had 90 degrees and your, you said your space got too hot. Now let's take a step back to the light. You said you didn't care about the light as long as you got the most lumens. The most lumens always comes at the expense of heat. The more lumens you get, the more heat you get. Better, faster, cheaper, you know what I mean? Like, so you're gonna get hotter light. So you're buying hotter light when the problem last time was too much heat or your inexperience about not backing the light off or dimming it. So there was so many things that you could have intervened on the last round that would have solved this problem. And that's why I tell you, buying more equipment doesn't have anything to do with this. Are your lights dimmable? Are your thousand watt ballasts dimmable? Yeah, I, I did dim them. Um, you know, you're right, 100%. Um, oh yeah, I know. The first time around, I did the thousand I need. Um, so. You know, I didn't know the second run I got a lot better. I used two 600 watts. And, um, wait, 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 wait. Yield. Let's stop right there. Let, let's change. I want to. Okay, the, you did the second time. Tell me the yield and the light on the first round. Tell me the yield and the light with the 600. And let's talk about those two facts. Um. So last time with the 600s, I got close to two pounds with uh, the 600s. I got to like one. Uh, it's, I can't get it off the top of my head. It's like 700 and something grand. Dude, or 800 and almost something two grand. pounds. We're good. Almost two pounds. We're good. Tell me about the first girl with the thousands. Um, I didn't, uh, I got the, I got less than what I got doing the 600s. Right. Cause so you killed your got, shit with too much light. Cause you killed your shit 
with too much right. light. Right. That's why my question would really be, I mean, you got two pounds from those 600s, almost. Why wouldn't you do that again? Why wouldn't you keep those two 600s and do that again? Um, sim well, simply because um, I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to try the CMHs because oh. I wanted to run uh, less wattage. Okay. Because I've heard that they perform similar to the 600s. Okay. Then I think that's great. And you were telling me that. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, I, I was, think you it's were great. Me that watt. Okay, yeah, you were telling me that the watts um, are what determine how much heat is put out. So. No, not quite. I was, not quite. Uh, how you how you make the light, how the light is physically created determines how much heat that the light makes. Don't confuse that with the electricity. For instance, <clears throat> if you just have a metal amp, just an amp, just an amp, <clears throat> and you turn it up to 10, a 600 watt amp will get, if you use 600 watts worth of electricity, it will get 600 watts hot. But if you use a thousand watts worth of electricity, it'll get a thousand watts hot. So there's two components to light. One is the bulb or the way that the light is generated. And the other is the electricity consumed. So there's two components to the heat of the light. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, okay. I understand what you're saying. So really just have to watch and kind of uh, learn the difference between like light outputs or how much heat light put up. <clears throat> no, what I'm gonna tell you is this. Don't do any of it. Keep doing your 600s. Get two pounds for 1200. I mean, at, dude, you're killing it. Get the right AC, that dual duct AC, add some CO2, and you'll be at two and a quarter pounds for 2,500 watts. I mean, that's not bad. I, I mean, that's not bad for like a small grow, a high production indoor grow. And when we do the math on it, you already have all the equipment or you go out and buy CMH. Now, do I understand that you want to try something else? Listen, 300 watts worth of electricity times two lights, like a 315 versus 600. Listen, it's 300 watts mm -hmm. more times two. It's 600 watts. Dude, 600 watts is 45 bucks a month. The fuck do you care? You know what I mean? It's 45 bucks a month. So let's well, be... What? Well, the place, I, I, the place I live, I should have said, the place I live, they have their own city power. So we pay like 10 times more for our power. So it's like, I mean, for the two 600 watts, I was paying over like 1,200 a month. It's ridiculous. It was, it was wait, really, wait, 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 wait. With two six hundred dollars. You were paying twelve hundred dollars yes. a month for your electric bill. Yes. Dude, they're yes. running dude, they're running the pool off your apartment. <laughs> I'm no, I'm in a house too, so it, it, it's what's the so what's I'm the moving. That's why I'm that's I'm I'm moving now, so I was kind of starting to um I'm not gonna have the. I had a. I had a room that I built in my house, but since I'm moving, I just wanted to get two tents because I didn't want to have to build another room. So that's that's kind of. I'm in a transition, and since the bill here is so high, um, since the bills here were so high, I kind of was. In, I was kind of nervous moving somewhere else. You know, I didn't. I'm not really sure how much they're gonna charge me. So uh, listen, that's why. I, I, at twelve hundred dollars, this is twelve hundred dollars a month. There's there's a problem. I mean, there's got to be a problem because it, it, well, it for the instance, city is already paying taxes. sorry, go on. Um, no, there's a lot of petitions against this city. So, you know, I'm just moving out. Okay. So you don't even, so you don't even need the light. So I understand. I look stuff up all the time. I'm always dreaming. Listen, I appreciate the call. Thanks. Um, I'm always looking for a new way to grow. I'm always looking for some other way to do it. But the reality is that dude was getting a pound per light. You know what? A pound per 600 watt light. That dude was killing it. And the advertising was still selling him more shit. He didn't solve the true nature of the problem, and that was his electricity. Um, 
you see what I'm saying? Like, if you had an AC, whether it's the house AC or anything, and he was probably venting his AC, but if you had anything, um, listen, 770 770- Call me back in about 10 minutes. I got to answer the other bug question. I just want to finish up this call. All I'm suggesting is, is if you have 1,200 watts of light and you have 1,200 watts of AC, that's 2,400. If you go from 1,200 watts of light to 600 watts of light, you're at 1,800. If you're, you know what I mean? You go from 12, you go from uh, 2,400 to 1,800. I mean, that's down 25%. That's a 25% decrease in electricity i mean that's just the ac and his 2000 watt lights right i mean that's not the percentage decrease that he experienced going down to two six hundreds because two thousands is two thousand plus the ac is thirty two hundred so thirty two hundred was his twelve hundred dollar bill then he switches to two six hundreds and an ac so now he's at twelve hundred twenty four hundred then you drop down to then you go down to eighteen hundred but you got to spend more money on the lights it's a vicious fucking cycle, right? Because you could get the differential gear in your car changed out to something taller. You know what I mean? So like you could be at 50 and first, but it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? You could make six, 200 miles an hour, but it doesn't make sense to do that. You got to work within the constraints of the miles per hour, both on the street and the freeway that you're driving in. And it's the same thing with growing. You have to understand the situation. Listen, this guy could take, (laughs) <laughs> remember that story i always tell you the guy comes in my store and he's got fifteen hundred dollars he's got to move in 60 days and he's just got some seeds and he wants to know if he can make he's got to move it costs fifteen hundred dollars to move can i move and can i make fifteen hundred dollars off these seeds in 15 days can i you know what i mean yep boy, boy take your money here's some equipment get the fuck out dude i've i've had that customer I, um, dude, you have five dogs, Jackie 420, whatever dog you almost sat on in that video. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm just saying that you could take the money instead of buying the seeds, instead of growing the seeds, you could take the money and move, right? (laughs) It's tough. And the younger you are, the tougher it is to see tomorrow today and i'm just saying that when you get a little older and dude it's brutal i know what tomorrow i think about tomorrow now and soon as you think about tomorrow today changes bah! that's why like really realistically that's why 420 jack jackie 420 can wear that hat and if i showed up in a sideways hat you'd laugh at me because i can't I, dude you just you can't pull it off anymore, right? So I'm just saying there's different levels. I totally respect being younger. Totally respect being older. Nothing like I am I was him. I'm going to be my mom. You know what I mean? So I, I get all that. So I'm just saying that. <laughs> I can see both sides of it. I'm not so angry that your music's so loud. But I'm just saying that there's this relationship. And when people say, I want the best or the most... Dude, there are a lot of factors you have to consider to get to that point. Because if you just consider one factor, if you just consider one factor, the freeway on-ramp, you're going to, you know what I mean? Like that's one to 60. There's no good gas mileage. Like literally you need three gears. Boom. Slide the gears. Boom. 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 In the third and, you know what I mean? Just get a ratcheting shifter, knock it back twice and you're good. You can get a huge stall converter. I'm just suggesting that when it comes to my store, the number one problem that I have with growers is always equipment. You have no idea how to combine the equipment with the scale, scope, and magnitude of this project. And that's really what separates me from all the other channels that talk about growing. All I want to do is put it in perspective for you. All right, so I got a couple calls that wanted to call me back. Let me make sure my mic's still on. Um... Not that hot. Oh my God. See, this is my point. Anybody. Wait, 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 wait. Anybody know. Yeah, where is that coffee ground? Somebody just stuck that coffee ground. Anybody know if putting coffee grounds. Now, I mean, 
Okay, so here's a question on, uh, on live chat. And if you've been with me for a while, you know what I mean? If you've read the book and you've been listening to me for a while and, and I don't offend you and you take the information in the, uh, in the, in the spirit that it's given, which is the more of you that learn what I have to say, the less fucking questions you have. When you come to my store, we can be friends. You can buy the right shit and have more success. Dude, I can't tell you how appreciative I am when somebody comes to my store, like a six light led guy, which I hope you come back. Oh, I'm supposed to do use equipment today. Fuck. Well, I'll take a tour of my store anyway. So, uh, a guy who was supposed to come back, dude, I, I, I wish you'd come back and sell me your other four LEDs. I'd buy them. I'd give you cash for them. You know what I mean? Like they came in because they watched my videos. They had the wrong equipment and they traded me some, but of what they bought. But the best part was they had the concept. So I could just fine tune what they needed for their space and their ideas and reinforce a few key things. I got to tell you, I really like it when my customers come in and they have a clue we can have a different relationship than when you show up and you're like, Oh yeah, I used to grow, man. What's up? I used to grow with my parents. Oh yeah. I had a, I had a plant in a closet. Oh, under my mom's bed. And then I look at you and I go, what type of light was it? No, I don't remember. What PPM were you at? Oh, I wasn't the one who did the nutrients. I just want to point out that there's a couple different ways to be. <clears throat> and statistically, because I know more about you than you're willing to admit about yourself, <clears throat> I can assure you that most of you fail because there is no way you're going to understand the concept of that. Frankly, by the time you finish that plant's going to be five months old. Five months old, four weeks as a seedling, eight week veg, eight week flower. But blam, the fuck are you going to put a thousand watt light four inches over it in week two? Anything. Oh my God. It just drives me fucking bonkers. I'm sorry. I've been trying to do the thing where I lower my voice and I don't have to be as intense about it. But then, uh, but then you come in my store. Uh, statistically. A lot of people can tell you a lot of things and there's a lot of information on the internet. And that's why I don't engage or get involved with any of it. Because the reality is anybody can show you a cannabis plant and how to grow. And I'm about to show you a cannabis plant and how to grow and take clones and everything too. I'm about to show you all of that too, right? In fact, I mean, like we were talking, oh, in fact, okay, I'll show you the box, but let's talk about uh, pest control. Um, <clears throat> let me, let me grab a file. I have a file. Let me download a, let me see if I have this file. Okay. Let me grab this because I have this pretty sweet image that I put in that I put in, uh, in my, that I have in all about nutrients and, and I want to show you the the latest one we have. Let me just, I just got to find it. I wasn't planning on showing you so I can, cause I'm going to talk to you about bugs. So I have this image. Um, bah. all about nutrients. Is this a download? Hmm. Nope, that's too far back. Sorry, give me one sec. <clears throat> You'll like the picture. Everybody smoke a bowl. We're okay, that's too far back. Um, um, <clears throat> I know I have it somewhere. Okay. So what I like to do, what separates me is, um, I think in a lot of ways is I, I already know what the problem, I actually know the answer. Let's just start there. 
I really don't care about how you're growing. Let's just face the fact that I know the answer and let's just assume that I'm right and let's just work backward. Um, because everybody bitches about me that I sell stuff or that I do this or we know all the different things that you bitch about me for. I'm a dick. I just don't care. All of those things. But nobody ever tells me that I'm wrong. You can't. I mean, it's just, you know what I mean? You just can't tell me that I'm wrong because I, I know the right answer. So if we start with the answer, let's just assume that I'm right. Um, and then we'll work backward from the answer. And then if anybody finds out that I'm wrong, you know what I mean? You can tell us all about it. So the guy wants to know about bugs. Bah. The guy wants to know about bugs. Um, let me, I have, uh, I have, I have the book. I have the picture. I'll just grab it from the store. Ah, dude, I can't tell you how I love my store. Like, all of this stuff in the advanced nutrients security cabinet really it's the advanced nutrient security cabinet i mean all this stuff i'm gonna i have a video of the way my store looked like and the way it is now and i was watching it as i've been editing it and i gotta tell you it's downright embarrassing and uh and i was watching it and it literally just like just like threw up in my mouth it was you know what i mean just a little it was so bad compared to the way it is now um 210 good morning 210 good morning okay let me just double check to make sure um that you guys can hear me i got mine on desktops on Streaming is okay. All right. Sweet. I think it's in this book. I'm trying to find the one image of, of all the bugs. So we know exactly. So we're all talking about the same. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I made, I got hired by Raw Nutrients NPK to make uh to make uh, some some advertising for them. Uh, this was, uh, they were still using Harley. This is when they first got Harley and they hired me to make some advertising for them. So what did I tell them? I told them there's a couple of problems that you have as a company. One is super fucking complicated. So you have a problem with having so much shit. So I literally made the map for them and and imaged it on how to use it this plus this plus this plus this and all the product and i went over i, I did a bunch of graphic stuff for them and i made and then this one here for sns hydroponics hydroponics Okay, so I made this one. Oh, not, uh, sorry, got off track. That was NPK, not SNS, three, three letters. All right, so this is the SNS chart. This is each bug and the problem that they, each bug, the problem that they have, what it looks like, and how to solve it because it's always the same thing. And then when you read more about it, then when you read more about it in the grow book, like I go over like specifically troubleshooting and, uh, and what the different bug problems look like, what the different bug problems look like and, and how to treat them. I mean, in the next round, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put like one problem on a page and like 20 fucking pictures. So you know exactly what it looks like anyway. So you can tell what the bug is and there's a couple of ways to handle bugs. Uh, I, I will tell you that right now we just bought a couple of cases of mold and mildew like SNS 244. We also carry uh, Azimax. So, okay, so now why isn't, nope, this one, nope, this one. Um, that's this, right? 
Okay, so we have a couple of products and it's really, it's seriously like time of year. Like if you get mold and mildew when it's not, when it's not uh, wet outside, like you got to ask yourself like, you know, what's going on? Okay, this is 244 and I don't have to pick. Okay, so this is 217, Azimax. Ah. So there are a couple variations on the theme of this stuff. And the general idea is that some stuff like 217, some stuff like 217 only kills spider mites. There's a 203 version of that too that kills everything but spider mites. Then there's stuff like Azimax. This is, I think this is a GH product. Now this kills everything, molds, mildews, and spores and funguses. Otherwise you have to, if you want to kill spores and fungus, you're at SNS 244 or some other fungicide. There are insecticides, there are fungicides, there are bactericides too, but it's not really a plant thing. So there are insecticides, fungicides. From that perspective, some insecticides kill certain things, some insecticides kill all insects. If you kill everything, you tend to be stronger than if you kill one or two things. So there's a couple of ways to play this game in terms of which one of these you buy. Now. If you get mold and mildew during the bug season, then you need to be, uh, you need more venting. You need a dehumidification and more venting because that's a, uh, that's a tough thing to do is to get mold and mildew during spider mite season because here at the store, like I can tell you literally six months ago, we bought spider mite and then you know, this month we're buying 244 and uh, bactericide. So those are the things. So it's always you got to figure out what the problem is and what causes it, just like anything else that I tell you. Um, diagnosing the, and treating the true nature of the problem is 100% what we're trying to accomplish here. So, in, in, you know, um, oh, everyone hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. That way you get alerts. I'm also doing the Cannabis Information Network. I have some good videos on that channel too. I've just started posting them. I did one one yesterday for uh, the Hydro Farm buyout because Hydro Farm Sunlight Supply, BWGS, Nickel City Wholesale, Biofloral. You know what I mean? Like there's some discussion on our side of the industry. So if you want to see what's happening on our side of the industry, you can always do Cannabis Information Network. Um, okay, so now we know that there are certain times of year. So I, if I hear certain things at certain times, like I'm already suspicious, like the same thing with the light, you know, from the last caller. So how do you handle bugs? All right, you got mold and mildew. What you're going to have to do is you're either going to have to check venting, vent more at night, which is usually when they get humid, when you stop venting at night. You have to decrease the temperature. Uh, I got somebody 15 minutes early. So you got to decrease the temperature, run the, sometimes if you have too much AC, it doesn't run long enough. It cools the air so quick, it doesn't have time to take the humidity out. So there's that. Now, in terms of bugs, you never spray anything with the lights on because the leaves get hot and they'll boil the water. That's why you don't water your grass during the sun. It also magnifies the light and some of the products are oil-based. So you don't do that. It's like intentionally burning your plant. So you can do whatever you have to do to the plant beforehand. Then after the lights go off, you spray. Now there's a couple of components to spraying, right? There's insecticides. There are like oil-based stuff that smother the bugs and the eggs, things like that. Because if they have to breathe it in, a spray that, uh, an, a breathe spray doesn't really work on like a larva, like an egg. So those are some of the things to consider. Now we've got bugs. Let's say that there's an infestation of spider mites. Let's work from the end. If you ask me how to save your buds and what you should be spraying, I got to tell you it's already over. Because if you say, how late can I spray? Eh, you failed. If you have to spray, because if you just sprayed at week four preventatively, uh, you shouldn't have a problem until the end. Now, what you spray on week four may be bug spray and mold and mildew because they get, you know, big buds get humid and it's hard to blow around to circulate the air. But, um, yeah, it, the, the humidity and mold and mildew and insects depends on where you live, but... 
but it's not it, it's it's a perspective thing you understand that um somebody was just saying it depends on where you live on live chat but it's a perspective thing now you have all the information you can take the piece of information you need and apply it to your situation that's why i don't teach you how to grow hmm, i just teach you how to think about growing these are all the conditions that go through my head when you're talking remember i told you there's that list of shit so I work backward because I already know the answer. So I, I stop at the point that you said something, you know what I mean, off the trajectory. And then we both know what's going on. Um, okay. Uh, I got somebody sitting outside. So let me just go. Let me just go say something to this guy. You guys can listen, but I'm not going to show you. But let me just say something to this guy outside. But, you know, we're still talking about bugs and what is and what's not appropriate. Hey, good morning. I'm webcast on my channel. You're welcome to come in the store and hang out. Oh, you just want three bags of soil? Oh, dude, give me cash? Oh, you win. All right, give me cash. You can have it. Yeah, I can do card. Okay, give me card. You're going to give me a couple bucks in cash because I got to charge it. Debit, credit. Oh, I got an ID then. There's no, we're not, we're not on camera over here. Sweet. Here we go. All right. So, what soil are you buying? Fox Farm Ocean Forest. Why are you buying that one? Yeah, of course I want to see it. A lot of people have trouble growing outdoors here. But oh, I've, yeah. I've actually got it down pretty good. So what was the thing that most people have trouble with outdoors here in Vegas? Uh, well, this is a, like yesterday. Um, problem is that it... This is your card? It's desert, so people aren't used to... You know, it gets really dry really quickly, but... The, that's like, uh, yeah, just but at the, the bottom. The trick to growing outdoors here is you really should start them off inside until they're about a foot and a half tall, and then do that around April. And they're able to take the abuse of the sun a little bit more. You also have them under a big tree in the background, huh? Yeah, it also helps to uh, have them in some shade. Okay. But when they get big, they actually can take most of the sun most of the day. They seem to do quite well. They actually do all right here if you uh, can start them off indoors. It's a lot of sun power here, and, and this is strong enough plant to take it. They get to the day. Sweet! Yeah, it's going to be huge, and it looks moderately good. Are you, it looks like it could maybe use some nutrients. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You, you've been on one bag of okay, that was one bag. That's a big ass plant for one bag. A little less newts until flowering. Can I get you to email me that picture? Sure. Okay, or you can even text it to me no, if you want. You. Okay. Better. Here we go. Let me write this down because I don't. Everyone doesn't need to know. Would you send that to me now so I can show everybody on the channel what we're doing? Um, I'll pick that up. I'll email it to myself, and then we'll go from there. Bah, I was talking about bugs. It's ten minutes till the store opens. Gah, sweet. We'll look at this picture. We'll share it together. Yeah, heat, heat, heat. He should have a, I, dude, I, Queen B, I will have a walk around mic in a minute. I am literally just going to get, I'm just going to be able to hand it to somebody so they can talk into it. I've been working on it. I had this one that I used to use and I was just going to like set it down, but I think I'm just going to get another wireless mic. In fact, okay, I'll just shut the door behind you. Oh, just shut the door when you're done for me. In fact, I have another mic here anyway, but yes. You are, you are, it is accurate what you just said, Queen B, and I will, uh, I will get that. We'll make sure that uh, I get this picture right now before he gets out of here. So what did we learn? We learned that one, <laughs> it's funny because I was telling you about the one, about the 16 ounce red cup versus the one gallon pot and how long soil lasts for. Blam. Okay. Thank you. Oh, there's cold water in the fridge if you would like. Front left corner. Help yourself, please. It's a hot day in Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a 
listen, this is why I don't grow cannabis for you because nobody else has a store. That's why I'm right. And you can trust me when I tell you the grow boss is two suns hot. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. Subject. Oh, you guys are going to love this. Okay, so ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll leave the door open if he's out there. Yeah, I just leave the door open. That thing. Thanks. That's fine. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, uh, Ralph, Ralph is. I can't see it. Ralph's at the door. Okay okay let's see um let me let this picture should be sent <laughs> uh he just came in because he just wanted some stuff for his he was following along with his buddy and okay got it got it you know it really is amazing taking something from real world and and just absolutely moving it over in one second onto digital and then being able to see it. Thank you. And then being able to see it just like that. Okay, not the biggest of big, but I mean, it's looking pretty good. Let's get, uh, I mean, it's looking, it's looking pretty yellow at the bottom. He could have topped it a little more to keep it wider. I mean, that, that motherfucker looks like 10 feet tall. Bah. So he could have gone a little wider instead of had the runaway. It could have, you know what I mean? You could have, you're still going to get the same budge. You could have, you know what I mean? Handled it a little better. But his observation was one bag of ocean forest. I, I just want to point out that this dude said he got this far on one bag of ocean forest i'm sorry you said you said what about nutrients you know what i mean that's crazy that that uh, that you would think that hey ralph come here i don't want you outside yet ralph come on hi good morning come on ralph it's too hot it's too hot your blanket's not outside come on Listen, the show is free if you got to put up with my dog. You know what I mean? The show will end before, I, you know what I mean? I can't, I got to deal with my dog. It's the best dog ever. Look at that dog. That's good. Here it comes. Oh, Ralph. Oh, you're such a good dog. Bad dog. Okay. So this was this guy's plant. That's, look how far he got on a bag of ocean forest. And you guys are saying, what about nutrients? what that's why that's why i tell you guys what are you what are you saying when you talk to me about nutrients you guys are so far away from the truth that it's mind-boggling and that's why i play the character i do on youtube i literally play a character on youtube oh you know what 631 631 good morning you called so many times what can i do for you 631 bah why am i losing calls today tools options audio setting check check there i am speakers you guys are coming out of where you're supposed to okay that's what I'm saying. Like when you guys worry about nutrients, this guy's going to solve the problem by adding, <coughs> this guy's going to solve the problem of nutrients. He didn't come to my store and buy nutrients. He came to my store and bought three more bags. What did his friend tell him to do? His friend told him, go, 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 go buy more soil. <laughs> seven, seven, zero. Good morning. Hey, girl. Yes, sir. Finally got a hold of you. Just got a really quick question, I think. Um, so luckily, I'm just about to finish. Uh, I, I got your book halfway through my grow, so it's not what I wanted the amount wise. But um, my question was, in, in the grow book, I really didn't see much about when to harvest, more just about generally speaking. So uh, uh -huh. I did, of course, a lot of research on the Internet, and I saw stuff about, oh, you got to wait till all the hairs are receded or wait till they're all orange or wait till it's 50% cloudy, 50% amber. What's a, is there any one 
solid way to tell when to harvest, or is it just a experience thing? Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. You can smell it. Okay. So, so I've got three plants in there, and two of them I started two weeks later. So this plant smells pretty good. No. But, I mean, is it just like super strong? Is no, it, is it... no, it's not. There. It's not smell pretty good. Smell pretty good means you did a good job growing it. That's not what smell pretty good means. What smell, what, what, what I mean is a ripe apple smells different. A ripe peach, the apricots, when you walk down the aisle at the supermarket and you smell the produce, there is an ethylene. It makes my eyes itch. When I used to grow, I'm like, oh, it's time to harvest because my eyes are itching. It's a pollen thing. It's a, it's a maturity thing. And that's in the zone. And, and all of those other things are great. Listen, the, all the research you did, it's all accurate. And you know why, you know why it's all accurate? Because that's about the time. Now, the question always is, is how do I know what high you want? If part of ripening is in relation to pollinate, in relation to maturity and the high that you want, you would have to harvest buds a week early, a week and a week late. You'd have to cure them all the same. Then you'd have to get high with them all and take notes. Listen, I tell you guys all the same thing. You never handed a bag back and was like, oh my God, it was harvested a week early. Have you ever really pulled out a loop to look at a sack of weed? You know what I mean? Like, have you ever really tried to buy weed like that? I mean, you'd be laughed at. That's why none of it matters. Okay, listen, it's 10 o'clock. Like the channel, subscribe to The Grow Boss, send me money, buy everything I have. Yeah, click the like button. Um... Okay, so I will. I'm gonna work on getting the a walk around mic too. Uh, it, it is pretty interesting this picture that we got. Um, nine five. I'm running a little late on uh, the show today. I didn't get to answer the pest control, but let me just finish that up. So once you've got, once you've, let's just say you take something like Azamax. So it doesn't even matter what pest or you have. It's not mold or mildew. Whatever pest you have doesn't even matter. Let's just say you're gonna spray once every 21 days. So you spray once, you know, early in veg, it depends how long your veg is, once late into veg, at the start of flower, week four flower. You know what I mean? Go five weeks long. There's a couple of ways to do it. If, you're, if you have an insecticide, literally 15 minutes, pull all the leaves off the plant, reduce the plant and the places to hide for the bugs. Solve whatever condition, like let's say you have bugs outside, spray outside too, check the windows, try to find the portal of entry if it's not you. From there, it's, it's pretty simple. 15 minutes after the light goes off, apply as directed. One ounce of that, one ounce per gallon of that Azimax. Um, and that's for an insecticide. You really don't have to uh, do anything else besides thin up the plants and reduce their places to hide. Remove any infected leaves, but thin up the plant as best as possible if you have a problem and you're not spraying just for preventative. If you're spraying to solve a problem, I mean, it's emergency measures, right? You got to pull off as many places to hide as they can go because, well, frankly, if you're flowering and you're spraying, I mean, it's sort of already over, you know what I mean? If it's that deep um, into flower. Now, if you're spraying an oil-based product, something to consider is that bugs breathe through their skin. And just like your fingers get wrinkly in the jacuzzi, if you're doing like an SNS-217 or an SNS-203 oil-based product, you're going to want to spray everything in flour with water first. I mean, 15 minutes after the light goes off, hose everything down. I mean, water's not going to hurt the plant at all, right? So you spray everything down with water. Why? Because bugs breathe through their skin. So if you spray everything down with water, their, their skin swells just like your fingers in a jacuzzi. Why do you think I get bugs when it's springtime and mold and mildew when it's monsoon season? Because bugs don't like rain. So you apply water before you apply an oil-based product. It really doesn't matter with an aside, any aside product that's an insecticide. That is meant to kill bugs. It's not meant to smother them. If you coat them in oil, it kills the eggs and the bugs to some extent, just like Exxon Valdez killed all the animals in their oil spills. You know what I'm saying? It coats them and it doesn't work right. So bugs breathe through their skin. You're going to coat them with an oil-based solution. Then what we're talking about is repeating the process. Some bugs have a, like spider mites, they have a 48-hour cycle. So you're going to want to spray every three days. 
You'll kill, you, remember, you're not going to kill everything in any one application. Even if you use the hardcore stuff, like Avid. You know what I mean? Even the stuff you have to apply with a mask. Um, I'm just saying that if you're spraying preventatively on your product, you're probably going to want something oil-based and gentle. There's lots of products like that. But that's it. I mean, there isn't anything more to it than find the portal of entry, <coughs> spray around the building. Ah. Give me two minutes. Okay. So, um, you know what? Let's uh, test the waters and let's see. No, he's got back in his car. I'll leave him alone. Okay, so blah 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 like the channel tomorrow we'll do more stuff if you've got more questions 84 grow boss you can buy my books the growboss.com i'm the grow boss we'll get high again tomorrow i gotta go sell shit to customers or i'm gonna have to put like a one dollar click button on this screen i have to work that out anyway um uh okay so i gotta get my day started listen i always appreciate you guys calling in I appreciate you guys watching. Oh, uh, I wanted to show you one more thing. I have, I have a commercial out. I just wanted to show you this. I put out a commercial and I wanted to know if any of you saw this commercial. Aha, nine five one. Too late. <laughs> if you're seeing this video, you've been watching videos. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Nine five one. Negator on you. Time to close Skype. And let's uh, go over to the internet and tell me, listen, I'm spending like big bucks running this commercial nationally. So tell me if you're seeing this video, what you've you been watching videos about cannabis. Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. And if you want to know more about growing cannabis, you're going to want to watch my weekend webcast at 9 a.m. Hey, Ralph, come here. Pacific time. Because we go over everything Ralph, you need to know about growing cannabis. Hey, How I've got the camera that? in the back Check of the store on. Okay. In the back because only. I Ralph, work at a hydro store so, every day. Yes, what can I do for you? And I'm the guy that wrote the okay, book. Yeah, I do. That's that how I know you that. Wanna ask me? You want to ask me? You want to sit on the show? Yeah. Want to sit on the show and ask? Trust me when I tell you, knowing how to use the equipment is as important as knowing how to grow. That's why on my weekend webcast cannabis hotline we're going to go over everything you need to know how to Ralph, grow move. including how to use the equipment like taking clones with clonex rooting gel and the root maximizer okay. and mondi humidity oh, domes come, and why you I'm need have to walk with one sec for that and hydro uh, okay uh, and you can i don't know garden, where to we'll go i don't over know where to how to vent it using thermal flow so. ducting or you oh, can okay. call in and let's ask just skip that have a seat right there and I'll show you how to do it using my Ultimate RO and the Grow Boss Mega Meter. We'll go over PPMs, pH, everything you need to know to mix nutrients. Oh, here it is. And that's not even the best part because I broadcast from an actual hydroponic store. If you have a question about a product, I can walk over to the shelf and grab it and we can talk about it. I okay, think so that's, that's going Cannabis to Hotline. It's weekends, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But. If you need more information, if you can't wait and you want more information right now, you say can check, check, my check, check. Okay, I got online. And I've got more books too, with more examples of how to grow your garden, shopping lists. I've even got a 20 week garden tracker so you can track everything you do because we both okay. know you'll forget more. All right, so remember. this is. You know uh, so if that's not enough, <laughs> how do you guess my 90? Okay. Count no more grow more cars literally the most popular questions you guys ask okay so i was running that commercial nationally it, if you guys would uh you guys if you guys would let me know if, if you if you've seen it i've been uh i haven't spent a lot of money on that all right so this is store cam i wonder if this is going to work like this that's uh Bah, you sit right there. We'll just do Grow Boss. Okay, you guys let me know if you can hear if you can hear us. All right, so you got a couple questions for me. Couple questions. So first of all, um, when I was spraying for PM, since I had such a bad PM problem, I sprayed 30 minutes before my light went off. Well, came in the next morning, big mistake. I've called all kind of, you know, 
some burn everywhere. So, second spray, I went and got a headlight, waited about 30, 45 minutes for the lights to shut off. Went in there, did a really thorough spray this time, and then didn't get any light burn from that. So, my question now is, for one, is it is it worth picking off the leaves that are completely burnt up? Is that going to stall growth? And two, can I do one last spray? I'm coming in at the end of week three. Okay. Uh, okay, so they say that they can hear you good sound. Awesome. I, I just want you to know that I, I literally ended the show with that same comment as that this is both the time of year for powdery mildew and there's several applications and to do it after the light goes off because especially what you use what product did you use sns 244 okay sns 244 oil-based product if you do it when the lights are on you're going to have a bad time correct so that is that's why i tell you guys don't got to teach you how to grow just how to teach you how to use the equipment so yes you could spray it again always do it after the lights are off you can pull off whatever leaves you want. How deep into flower are you? Uh, coming at the end of uh, week three. So oh, yeah, tomorrow brilliant. will be week four. Yeah, brilliant. The question is, what did you do about, because I think I remember you had a problem before. I think you and I talked about this. What, what did you do about venting under the canopy? Um, I added another fan, two fans two under fans. the canopy. Um, what kind of fan? Um, the 16-inch Hurricane. But does it go on the floor? Oscillating. It's oscillating. Wall fan. Yes. Okay. So... It's about 18 inches under the, or it's right under the canopy. So it's about 18 inches from the ground. Okay, so you took like literally a wall fan. Oh, literally a wall fan and, and put it just under the canopy. Just put it on the ground. Yes. Okay. Let me. I think this is. See that wall fan right there? That's a 16-inch hurricane. Uh, that the one right one. there on the left. Yeah, that one right there. That's the 16-inch hurricane. Yeah. So you mount that on the floor and blow underneath the canopy because I got to tell you, at some point you got to blow air from under the canopy up, especially this time of year. So, have you been making progress with it? Yeah, um, pretty much. I would say at least 85 percent uh, of the PM looked like it diminished to me, and I just wanted to go in there and do one last thorough spray and clear everything up. Okay, I, you know, I, I think one of the biggest problems that growers have when they come in, what, besides finding the right advice, once you find the right advice, actually using the product and following the instructions. It's a hard thing to do to start putting it on your plants, right? Right. So you don't know how much to do. You don't know if you're going to burn it. Did you test it on one yes, plant Yes, I first? did. I did test it on. I tested it on one portion of a plant. The next day, I came and checked that portion of the plant. It looked good. I completely sprayed down the one plant that looked the most infected. So came back next day, checked it. Third day, hit the whole garden. It's a nice compromise because it's a hard thing. Even, even running on an ambulance. Dude, stabbing somebody in the heart. Right through their ribs with that needle, ah, you never know if you're going to get it right. So I'm just saying that the application, I, I know it's tough, but if you limit all of the products that you use so you don't have that shit shelf full of stuff and you use the right product at the right time, I'm just saying that it takes a little bit of courage, but then next time, ah, you know what? It's it, it Literally, it's August. You spray your plants. You put it in the 20-week garden tracker. You've got your... Um, you know what? I'm just finishing up a webcast, oh. so if you don't want to be on camera, stay up there. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. That's okay, that, that. you know what? And it's time to end my webcast. Listen, I appreciate everybody watching, but I got to go do the store. People are coming in. I, listen, I always appreciate it. Thanks so much, everybody. I can't even risk it. I, you know, I can't even. Yeah, it's over. Show's over. I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you.